The modern welfare state began in England a few years after William Beveridge laid out a report on the five evils of society, squalor, ignorance, want, idleness, and disease. That was in 1942. And with the exception of disease, well, the modern welfare cradle-to-grave grave benefit state has been an epic proportions failure. We've got Fox News contributor Ellis Hennigan. He's going to beg to differ with me. England, we saw the riots um, because they're going to start to maybe take back some of these welfare benefits. But if you look at these things, squalor, ignorance, want, idleness, they're, they're worse than ever. Wait, Josh, you're not coming out in favor of squalor and want and ignorance. You know, there is a role of society to say, listen, we want you to do great. We want to encourage folks to do well. But there are some instances where we do need to extend a helping hand, aren't Cradle there? Cradle to grave is really the problem. Yeah, and I know you think. Who do you that, want to ignore, the kids or the old people? Uh, I want to ignore the kids that become old people on welfare. I want to say, you know what, you can make it on your own. Let me tell you something. Okay. I, I find it's interesting. After slavery, black people in this country built towns from scratch, mm -hmm. hundreds of them, from nothing. A they had story. zero. Sure. They had zero. They have more pride and self respect now than a lot of kids do out on the streets right now who were born on welfare and food stamps and never had to really go out there and kill a beast themselves. Charles, I love the self-reliance point you're making, and I completely agree with you, and we can look into our own lives and our families and see lessons that are worth following in that way. It's an important part of the American value. You are right. But it's not the only part of the American value. Part of what we are as people is that we do have some sense of social responsibility. We do reach out to those who are in need. And right now, we're at a time in this country I got to tell you, man, there are a lot of people out there suffering, and some of them do need our help. We do help, and we all take pride in it. But the question is, though, do you have a society like 1945 when England said, okay, we are officially going to do this. We're going to take our people, and we're going to take care of them, cradle the grave. England was the number one country in the world. Back then, it had the best education system in the world. You know where it ranks today? 27 and falling like a rock. I think it's backfired in so many ways, and I think it's morally irresponsible to let people, to take care of people like that forever and never let them go out on their own. Okay, I, I'm with you about not wanting them there forever. The goal ought to be to get them off and make them socially self-sufficient. But which of these things do you want to deny people? You want to tell kids they don't get health care? You want to tell hungry people they can't have food? A sick person, you want to look into their eyes and say, I'm sorry, you can't have a doctor because you can't afford the money? I don't think we want to say that as Americans. Let me tell you something. The abuse of the system, just a minute ago we had on the screen, uh, this, last, this week Time Magazine put out an article, uh, you know, and I think they kind of think along the same school of thought as you do, and they talked about income inequality mm -hmm. sort of at being at the crux sure. of what's going on Big in problem. Europe. Big and problem. And they used the Gini coefficient, which more or less says there's a gap between rich and poor. Uh -huh. The top five countries that they featured that have the biggest gap between rich and poor Portugal, the UK, Italy, Greece, and Spain. Here's the crazy thing. They're either socialist countries or they're like the UK, which has this big welfare pl program. This shows you that when you go on socialism, when you go into this sort of welfare mentality, not only do you hamstring your country, but the, the income inequality gets worse, not better. And look at all the debt they owe because of these programs. You know, we've got a be even a better example closer to home, right? Look what's happened in America. Since the Bush administration took over, more and more of the wealth concentrated into fewer and fewer of their hands. I'm not trying to steal all their money, Charles. But I do say that part of the strength of America is a robust and, frankly, growing middle class. And given this tax code we have today and some of these policies, we're squeezing middle class people. We should stop that, I just, we? I just disagree with the notion that somehow my success is tied into how much money you can take from Bill Gates. And I think when you feed that to people, you give them reasons to fail. You give them reasons to feel good about failing, and that's not a good thing. Okay. Let's join Warren Buffett and say maybe some of the folks at the top are. Oh, don't get me started on Buffett. Don't get me started more, on Buffett. Charles. We'll do a whole new segment on Buffett, okay? Uh, Ellis, I love you. You got a great good heart, to see you. even though I think you're wrong about everything. And else. I want to be as rich as you. How about okay. that?